everybody and uh, welcome back to my channel my name's Naomi and in today's video we're going to be fixing up my dad's old pizza oven that's been sitting there for years and we're going to make some pizza so this pizza oven my dad made about four or five years ago and it's not been used since then and it's filled with disgusting ashes and it has loads of holes and leaks in it and loads of stuff so we're gonna work on clearing that out today so the first thing we're gonna do is light a fire basically just to dry it out because it is so damp and there was lots of holes in it so we started off by building a fire inside it just to dry it out and get rid of all the sort of debris and insects and all sorts of stuff this really helped because the smoke let us see where all the little holes are so we grabbed our preferred heat resistant sealant and filled up all the little cracks and holes. This took a while because there were actually quite a lot of holes and cracks so you can see we just sort of squeezed in this sort of like chocolate frosting style sealant and smushed it into the cracks to make sure no smoke or heat could get out. So as you can see the roof took a bit of time because there was lots of cracks and there was lots of leaks with the smoke so um, I nearly fell over a couple of times but it was fine but we managed to fill in all the different cracks with this heat resistant sealant so now it should be watertight and then once we did all that and the fire burned out we cleaned it out so we took out all the ashes and coal and it was much more dry which was great so we could actually use the pizza oven and all the stuff was out of it. So now for the fun part, which is to make the pizza. So I'm following a recipe that I found on YouTube. I'll link that video below. I did a few things differently, so I'm just gonna talk you through what I did. Uh, first of all, I started with a teaspoon of active dry yeast, a teaspoon of sugar, and a quarter cup or 60 mils of warm water just to bloom the yeast, and I let that sit for about five minutes. So once the yeast is bloomed, you're gonna to wanna to pour that into a much larger bowl because you're about to add a lot of flour and it's about to get messy here. So you're going to need two cups or 475 millimeters of warm water, one tablespoon of sugar, a tablespoon of salt, a quarter cup or 60 ml of olive oil, and five cups of bread flour or 600 grams of bread flour. You will need more flour than this. This is kind of just to get it started. Um, it's going to be really wet and really, really sticky. Actually, it's going to be the stickiest thing you've ever touched in your life. So do make sure that you roll up your sleeves before you start this because it is almost impossible to get off. Like it, it was really sticky. So basically you're gonna to wanna to add, I probably added another at least 200 grams or so of flour as I continued on because you kind of want it to, you don't want it to be super sticky. You want it to be like slightly sticky. Uh, so you can pour that out onto a flour work surface and you're gonna start kneading. Uh, the kneading process takes, I think I needed it for a good 10 minutes or so because you want to get the dough to become less sticky and uh, you're going to incorporate more flour so it's going to dry up a bit more and then with kneading it for over 10 minutes it's going to smooth out and become like a nice sort of smooth tacky ball rather than a big sticky mess. You'll see me stop kneading here occasionally to kind of check what my flour or what my dough was looking like. You see I'm like stretching it out. What you're kind of looking for is to be able to stretch out the dough and for it to be translucent you should be able to like shine a light through it without it tearing and then you'll know that you've built up enough gluten and elasticity for your dough to be good. So I'll just let you see how my dough has changed here. You can see it's a lot smoother, a lot less shaggy. It doesn't, it's not as tacky now. Uh, so this pizza dough recipe makes up to about four 12 inch pizzas so I used a fish slice here to cut it into four equal portions and then once you've got four equal portions you're going to want to smooth your dough out into round balls so you can see I'm kind of you know tucking it under itself so there'll be a nice smooth top and all the sort of rough edges will be underneath and you're going to want to take four bowls and put a decent amount of olive oil a good tablespoon or so of olive oil into each bowl Put the dough into the bowl with olive oil and completely coat the entire dough ball in olive oil and also wipe down the sides of the bowl with the olive oil as well because when you let the dough rise it's gonna be sticky again so you don't want it to stick all over the bowl into the cling film. And then you can put this into the fridge for 24 hours, that's what the recipe suggested. I actually did about 5 hours in the fridge and it worked out fine, it tasted really good but you can keep it in the fridge for up to a week apparently. So once you put your pizza dough in the fridge to rise, you're going to want to get started on your sauce. So for my sauce, I used a 500 gram carton of tomato passata, two tablespoons of tomato puree, 
half a teaspoon of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, one heaping teaspoon of oregano, and one teaspoon of Italian seasoning. And I just left that this said I didn't cook the sauce or anything because I want to just cook it on the pizza in the oven so we don't want an overcooked sauce. So the pizza dough is finished. It has been rising in the fridge for about four or five hours or something. So it's a little bit bigger than it was before. Um, you're supposed to leave it for maybe 24 hours, but I didn't do that. I ain't got time for that. Um, so we're gonna top it with uh, different things and set it on this pizza pail. We've got like ham, cheese, chorizo, mozzarella, and we have um, a big bag of semolina to put on the bottom so it makes a nice crust. So we're going to take a look at this pizza peel and see about stretching out our pizza dough and making pizzas and the oven's ready to go. So let's go. I'm just gonna really put loads of semolina and hope to Jesus it doesn't stick. Wow, look at that. You can't really see. Can you see through the light there? That's what you're looking for. See that translucentness? And it's really, oh wow. Well, this isn't gonna be a circle. <laughs> this turned out pretty good. I'm quite happy with this. God, I'm so hungry. <laughs> How long do these take to cook? A couple of minutes, I think. Okay, I'm gonna take this out to the pizza oven. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, by the way, my dad made this pizza peel out of what looks like an old walking stick and a, a sheet of uh, steam. <laughs> Putting some semolina on the bottom of the pizza oven stone so that to make sure it doesn't stick. I'm really afraid that it's gonna stick. Okay, let's see. Get, get stuck. Cut on that little, yeah. The little I can't wait any longer. Can really do with an extra stick. Yeah. Um, right. Tomato wedge. Oh, look at this burnt olive. That's so good. I'm being serious. Like, hang on. Can you, can you see if we can show you this base? Look at that. Ooh. Look how crispy that is. The semolina is giving that an amazing. Texture. Oh my god, I'm so excited. That, oh, that bit looks pretty good. Cool. Look at this crisp and base. Oh, cheese. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Cheers! Cheers! <laughs> <laughs> Hi. <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. Oh my god. Big game there's the bees with the cameras. <laughs> yeah, see like that. <laughs> These are all eyes. <laughs> there you go. Oh my god. So uh, thanks for uh, watching my video. Uh, please Drum, like it and subscribe. If you like more videos like this. Oh my god. <laughs>